Okay, well, let's <coughs> let's get started. And we'll, talk a little bit of, we'll introduce <coughs> the idea. You know, all these classes are basically just to help <coughs> introduce you to the concept that <coughs> there may be a, a, a different way to handle these things than you've been brought up to believe. <coughs> I know I don't like to be a doomsday person, or <coughs> but. A fellow called me the other day, he's on Lipitor, statin drug, <coughs> and he says that his doctor wrote the prescription, his insurance company is the one calling him now to say, <coughs> you aren't taking your prescribed medication. And, that, and they threaten him that if he doesn't fill his prescriptions, they may not insure him. Why? And, you know, down the road, maybe five, ten years, <coughs> they're talking about biochips you put in you that monitor your blood. <coughs> and if you're prescribed a medication and your biochip doesn't report to the supercomputer that you're taking it and your blood levels aren't up, you there may there would there will probably be penalties. So <coughs> You know, obviously, if you get run over by a truck or your arms cut badly, you go to the doctor. <clears throat> but there's so many things you can do for yourself that keeps you, what's the term, off the grid. You know, so <clears throat> it isn't, you aren't as likely to be told by someone in authority that you've got to do something that you may not agree with. I, I just couldn't help but think. You know, because depending on what a doctor says, you actually have choice if you want to follow the protocol or not. What you're saying is the insurance leverage, they will kick you off, so they are, you know, in a sense, coursing you to do you know, it. We've, we've kind of lost, the doctor's kind of third party here now. It used to be <coughs> you and the doctor have a relationship. <coughs> Excuse me. Now it's you and the insurance company have a relationship, and they tell not only you what is you know, covered, quote unquote. And unfortunately, we've gotten to the point where many people will go ahead with a risky procedure because it's covered. <laughs> it's covered, and, and someone's going to pay for it. Whereas, uh, the, the classic example, I knew a, a lady had bilateral carpal tunnel syndrome, and we talked to her about prototherapy, which is very simple, and many times you could, with one shot of sugar water or, or ozone into the wrist, is, you're cured and it might cost a hundred dollars. Well, she said their insurance company wouldn't cover it, so she's gonna go ahead with the surgery. She had bilateral carpal tunnel surgery. But the, the big nerve in the wrist, the median nerve was cut both sides, so she ended up with four surgeries. And so instead, someone, got, someone had to pay probably $30,000 <coughs> because it wasn't covered. So, I know it's a little aside, but depression is, it let's, it's it's kind of normal to be depressed at times. Especially if you listen to the news. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, the news can be depressing unless you keep in mind the big picture. Uh, you, you know who's going to win in the in the end, but it's sometimes the, the, the battle's kind of a struggle. <clears throat> but keep the big picture in mind when you're listening to the news, <clears throat> and it's it's worse than you think. <laughs> <laughs> But that's okay. It's um, keep your head in the right place. <clears throat> okay, so it's normal to have some depression. And on the first part of this page, I listed some of the things <clears throat> that could might indicate you're a little depressed. And if you go look, you can go online. I've, I've listed a couple websites here, <coughs> and they talk about one of the things that is characteristic of depression is uh, sadness, hopelessness, helplessness, worthlessness. These are all, and, and then it allows you to give yourself a score, a one to five score. You can do a one to 10 score, that's totally up to you. And each one of these things that could be associated with this clinical, you know, keep in mind here, <coughs> almost every mental disorder is subjective in nature. There's not a blood test and there's not a <coughs> x-ray that they can do to diagnose your depression. 
it's and 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 you know x-rays are bad enough you know you go, you go to x-ray and you can get a whole lot of diff different interpretations by the radiologist about what's a normal x-ray you think that's pretty objective you know here it is and some doctors say no that's not what it shows in fact they did coronary angiogram they did some studies and there can be as much as a 35 percent difference in interpretation of the degree of obstruction so keep in mind any sort of a depression, anxiety, <coughs> schizophrenia, all these things are clinical diagnoses. So j when you try and analyze yourself to see if you may be depressed, keep in mind that you're going to be probably as accurate as any, quote, professional person. <coughs> so if, <coughs> now, some of the other things, now if you're suicidal, that gets a little more serious. <coughs> But probably ought to talk to your pastor before you talk to your doctor. <coughs> That's, That's my first good point. idea. <coughs> but you know, you have trouble sleeping, or you, <coughs> or you, <coughs> work's boring, or you're depressed about your work. Well, That's pretty normal at times. <coughs> Has anybody had a job where they, after they've been on that job 15 years, they just still just love it? Okay, see, she's not depressed. So. <coughs> anyway. Okay, agitation, anxiety, uh, you know, there's all these things that are somewhat symptomatic. And, but if you want to be somewhat objective about it, then take a test like this and give yourself a score. Write it down in your journal and write down how your score in all these different categories. And then you'll have somebody to compare it to when you either reevaluate yourself after a few minutes, after a few months or weeks. <coughs> Or you try a particular remedy <coughs> to see, you know, if it's going to work. And <coughs> there's lots of them. <coughs> now, the next thing you do, if you think you might be depressed, you you, you really ought to get a book like this. It's a it's a great it's a great book. Uh, David Tanton, Dr. David Tanton, <coughs> wrote it, and it's it's almost like an encyclopedia. And if you, I, I'm sure like some of the other books you have access to. <clears throat> I'm sure if you read this book, you'll know more about depression than the average doctor. Because it covers so many more things than students learn in school. And unfortunately, they're, <clears throat> they're more and more being uh, trained by the pharmaceutical industry and the pharmaceutical industry has, has a, a diagnostic code book that uh, there are at least 370 different mental types of mental disorders, all subjective. So <coughs> get a copy of this book, uh, 10 bucks, it's all cost. So, <coughs> but it talks about all these different things we're going to talk about. And if you happen to be on medication, <coughs> it, it, it gives you some ideas about getting off medication. Because doctors are going to be very hesitant to take you off a of prescription medication because of the legal ramifications of going off a of medication, then doing something unfortunate, and then someone's going to look and say, well, why did that doctor tell her to stop taking that medication? And he's therefore liable. So everybody's real hesitant about telling you not to take a drug <laughs> that another doctor told you to take. So you, you've got to do it yourself. You've got to have the courage to take responsibility. And it's scary. It's really scary. And, you're, and you're, unfortunately, your doctor is going to increase that fear. And if you don't believe that, ask him if he really thinks you need a vaccination. <laughs> You'll probably die of measles if you don't. But that, that's, a, that's a great book, even if you don't have depression. But a lot of times, your, a dear friend or a, a relative has got this problem. Now you can talk to them and you may know a whole lot, but it's so much easier to believe what's written down than it is to believe someone that's close to you. You know, that's, I think it's something, the prophet's not without honor except in his own country. <coughs> Ask your kids. <laughs> okay, so here's uh, some of the things, fatigue, you know, you're, all of a sudden you're really fatigued, you're, you feel guilty, worthless, etc. Hopelessness, 
We've got to have hope, and, that, and that's important. Insomnia, early morning, wakefulness, it's excessive sleeping, and irritability, restlessness. <clears throat> and sometimes it's really helpful if you talk to people that are close to you th and ask them their opinions. Because if, we're, if, we're, if, you, if you live with someone, they're often real willing to tell you <laughs> what's the matter with you, that sort of thing. <laughs> but if you live by yourself, or uh, it, it might be more difficult. Everybody's got someone they can probably talk to. Okay, now if you get suicidal, I mean, if you're really seriously considering um, committing suicide, you, that's a time when you you need some help, and and don't be hesitant. But if the thought just passes your mind, be easier if I'm dead, well, that's, I don't think that's considered suicidal. So, okay. <coughs> now here's the online thought. The online site that you can go to get one of these self-administered <coughs> uh, tests. Okay, now <coughs> here again, <coughs> with every chronic condition, the first step is to clean up your act. <coughs> if you've got a sugar problem, if you, you eat for comfort, if you, <coughs> have, you know, heavy user of coffee or diet pop or any of those things, you got to quit. And I don't know why they still are allow aspartame, but aspartame <laughs> lowers your serotonin levels, which, you know, is a good, is one of the reasons they want to give people drugs. You, you've got to quit artificial sweeteners. But here, I, I think, I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir. <coughs> I would ask anybody still using aspartame to raise their hand, but you'd probably be embarrassed to do that. So I won't. <coughs> an ad on the TV a while ago said, need to drink coffee. Well, sure they, they do. They did a study. We got to have it. It <coughs> keeps you from... <coughs> We've reached a stage in our culture where it's almost universal. If they advertise it, it's probably not good for you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's cynical, I know. <coughs> but tell me something that they advertise is good for you. Well, come on, folks. Can't think of <laughs> I think of one. Okay. You don't need that new BMW? <laughs> a weekend at Salishan. Oh, well, okay. That might yeah. be that might be good. <coughs> yeah. Hey, why not? <laughs> yeah, okay. But most of the things they advertise for you, they're there to make money. And nowhere is it probably more like... It, there's recently... <coughs> It's vaccinations now, you know, that's, <coughs> now we're learning, and this is new information though, we're learning that vaccinations are probably a critical cause of autoimmune disease. And like we've talked about before in here, it's an epidemic. It's an epidemic, and we say, oh, we just don't know what to do about it. <coughs> my, my wife has an eye condition, and she's got inflammation in this eye, it comes and goes. When she gets stressed out, it comes back, but it's always in the same eye. <coughs> so the other day we were at the doctor's office. I just love going to doc <laughs> doctor's offices. <coughs> Payback time, anyway. I, I said to the doctor, why doesn't she get it in the, in the other eye? And he didn't have an answer. Root canal? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, we talked about that briefly. And she's got root canals, and then we're going to see a doctor out and get them pulled out. But anyway, <coughs> doctors are pretty well trained. They're great mechanics, and they're trained to treat your symptoms. So, <coughs> okay. But clean up your act. Get rid of the stuff that's totally discriminatory, and that's a bad word. That's not a politically correct <laughs> word anymore, is it? Don't discriminate. <coughs> okay. But you have discrimination. You can choose what you do to yourself to some extent. Get rid of the junk. Do it slowly if you have to. Cut your dose down half every six weeks or every. Just get rid of it. And that'll <coughs> eliminate a lot of problems. Okay. We've, now we've talked about some of these things. Keep a journal. Keep a journal. <coughs> and if you read books like this, you know, Dangerous Grains. <coughs> and, and of the <coughs> 150 some conditions associated with 
<coughs> grain, it says here under <coughs> gluten, the most common symptom, no, not gluten, yeah, gluten, depression is <coughs> the most common symptom associated with gluten sensitivity. The most common symptom. Hmm. So that would be pretty high on your list. <clears throat> Get off gluten. If you've done, you've cleaned up your diet, you're exercising regularly, and one of the other things we said to, <clears throat> to begin with, here in the middle of the first page, good vitamin mineral. Go to bed with a little melatonin or salt at a reasonable time every day. Go for a brisk walk several times a week. You don't need to join a gym. Okay? <clears throat> Pray, read your Bible, meditate, drink filtered water, and all those. And then the baking soda, cider vinegar twice a day. Just those things alone will get rid of probably 50% of the depression. Is it okay to put magnesium in with the baking soda and the vinegar? Yes, it is. Okay. Anything else you can tolerate, you can get in there. <clears throat> Yeah, Are magnesium. Separately, or baking soda and vinegar while it's like. Fizz? Yeah, I, you you can drink it while if you like the fizz, but it's going to work oh, if, it's if you don't. Thing. <laughs> yeah, it's releasing oxygen, but uh, you you get. I think it's more a little probably a little more effective if you get that oxygen release in your in your gut, but you don't have to. So separately, <clears> it's still. The baking soda advocates don't even talk about cider vinegar. So. It, and it works for them. Okay. They, that's one of these basic things. It's going to make you more alkaline. And when you're more alkaline, <coughs> you release more oxygen into the tissues. It dilates your blood vessels. So, <coughs> you're baking soda twice. And then, number one other thing, get rid of gluten. And it's getting so easy nowadays because <coughs> every store has a gluten-free section. <clears throat> it's a little more expensive, but it's still available. Not like the old days where you, you, you had to probably do pretty much do it yourself. <clears throat> you get sugar out of your diet, the artificial sweeteners. <clears throat> and if these things don't work, then I really suggest people go on a lemon juice fast. And here again, we've talked about that. Six lemons, <clears throat> two quarts of water, uh, a fast. That's the quickest way to find out what role <coughs> food is playing in any symptom you have. But you've got to keep a journal. And the first two or three days are very likely to be... <coughs> Can you all go 24 hours without eating and feel okay? No. Mm -hmm. Never tried that. <laughs> Never tried that? <laughs> no. <coughs> in I made about 70 time. years, you've never tried that. I know. I, I figured you'd tell me how old you are. <coughs> yeah, you've never gone all day without it. Okay. That's our affluent Not society. Since I was a kid and I had the measles, probably. <laughs> <coughs> you know, when you had the measles. Okay. But that's, the, that's the critical thing. If you cannot go 24 hours without eating, almost for certain you've got food addictions. And one of the symptoms of food addiction can easily be depression. So, <clears throat> that's better than any blood test you can do. Don't get trapped into these, <clears throat> either the scratch test. Unfortunately, you go to a doctor and you wonder about food allergy, they send you to an allergist, and they do scratch tests, which are <clears throat> notoriously <clears throat> inaccurate. You've got a real bad problem with pistachio nuts and cinnamon. <clears throat> anyway. But it only, cause it only measures one component of your immune response. Go on a fast, and then go on the paleo diet. One thing about the paleo diet, I bought the book, The Paleo Diet. Okay. And it says in there to watch your salt intake. It's very bad. And uh, you should not eat any grains at all. Not just, it doesn't even mention <coughs> gluten. It just talks about grains. Well, I think, that, I think that's fine to start that way. And if you are better on a paleo diet and you are told, that's the purest. Well, I was just buying it out of curiosity because I wasn't Yeah, well, to okay. But if you do feel better, then I think it's fine to re reintroduce some of what they call now ancient grains. You know, you go to Costco yeah. and you buy crackers made with ancient grains. Oh, They're really, yeah. really pretty good. Uh -huh. 
<coughs> amaranth and quinoa and some of these. Uh, but anyway, if you feel better on the paleo diet and you're no longer depressed, according to your journal, then you can reintroduce them in grains mm -hmm. and just see how you feel in a comparative sense. <coughs> The paleo diet, you know, theoretically is a paleolithic diet or the caveman diet where they didn't sit in one place and cultivate, so they didn't have the grains. They go around with the bow and arrow. <coughs> they go around with the bow and arrow, which is probably somewhat <laughs> mythical, but anyway, it sells, and it's, it's fine. It's just Atkins in, in a little in the latter-day version. Right. <coughs> okay. Okay, then, <coughs> then we come to... <laughs> An almost universal problem, thyroid. <clears throat> you gotta, you gotta understand thyroid and the many, many facets of thyroid. <clears throat> uh, there, there's a in Dr. Starr's book and Dr. <clears throat> uh, Brodebarn's book. <clears throat> they talk about the symptoms of of hypothyroidism or thyroid deficiency, as Dr. Starr calls it. Depression is present <clears throat> in at least 50% of the time. Okay, so you fast and nothing happens, you feel pretty good. So then you do your basal temperatures. And you're, you've got to do it. You cannot rely on the blood test. The blood test may be abnormal, but I'm guessing 80 to 90% of the time it is not going to be abnormal. And you will be told that you your thyroid is fine, and it may be, but your body's not fine. So... <coughs> Do your basal temperature. I hope you've all done your basal temperatures at least two or three days <clears throat> and are doing something about your low basal temperatures. Does anybody here have a normal basal temperature? I think I do. You think you do? Yeah. And based on what? Well, I take my temperature. Under your arm? Yeah. And what is it? I <laughs> <laughs> okay. See, that's what we missed, Kurt. That's what we missed last week. <laughs> okay. Okay. Over and over again, at least 50% of the people that, are low, that have a thyroid deficiency <coughs> are depressed. It just has to do... <coughs> this guy ran a pain clinic. <coughs> and he found that when his pain patients... And that can cause depression. When he got them on thyroid, <coughs> their pain was better. Everything gets better if you have enough thyroid. <coughs> and your risk of taking too much thyroid is very, very slight if you use a little. Here again, you read this book, <coughs> Dr. Tanton's book, you'll know more about depression than you're probably your doctor. If you read this book, you'll probably know more about thyroid disorders than your doctor. Because your doctor is trained for the most part, <clears throat> to look at symptoms, do the blood test, the TSH, the T3, the T4. And if they are normal, thyroid is excluded. That's what is taught at the medical school. And so you've got to, <clears throat> you may get an antidepressant when you need thyroid. So do your basal chimp. And now they're very inexpensive, safe. You don't even have to go down to every lab, any lab test now. <clears throat> you can actually do it at home. <clears throat> but you got to think about it. What do you do if, if your doctor tells you that you need thyroid, but yet you've got all the symptoms <coughs> of, a, of an underactive thyroid, and the, the blood test shows that you're maybe over, overdoing the thyroid, but yet you don't have any eyebrows, and your skin is dry, <coughs> your feet are cold, you know, all the symptoms you've got. But what do you do? <coughs> well, that's... What you do a lot of times, unfortunately, is you've got to take the responsibility. <clears throat> you've got to understand the symptoms and the potential risk and benefit of thyroid therapy <clears throat> and make a decision what you're going to do with your body. Well, that's what I've been doing. And I notice <clears throat> my, my, um, my pulse rate is higher than normal. You know, it's well, like okay, see, so those are the things you have to <clears throat> think about and modify something, maybe change brands, take a little less. And, uh, those are things you, you can work through and it's something you do need to watch for. If you're taking thyroid, you need to be, I hope you all know how to take your pulse. It's, it's kind of an important thing to know. Uh, take it here or take it here. Or 
<laughs> but uh, it's amazing how many people don't know how to do the, a few simple things. <clears throat> okay, vitamins. The B vitamins are critical. I mean, more and more, if we, if we go back and <coughs> it's unfortunate. <coughs> I, I took this book on root canals to uh, the, the ophthalmologist. He's a well-trained, very respected ophthalmologist. <coughs> the material in the book was almost 100 years old. And his, his main concern was it was old. I guess certain things, science wears out with time. I, I don't know. <coughs> he had all this documentation, and he was... But he was open about it. That, that was good. <coughs> but it was it was too old. Well, <coughs> Abram Hoffer and uh, is, was a genius back in the <coughs> 50s and 60s, and he was discharging people from mental institutions with the use of niacin <coughs> and vitamin B3 and vitamin C. I mean, they were no longer mentally ill with adequate doses of these vitamins. Of course, you know, they, it wasn't well recognized. You have to understand <coughs> that around the, the ni early 1900s, a group of people, and I think they're probably funded by the big, the rich people in this country, <coughs> decided there should only be one type of medical school. And so the American Medical Association sponsored the <coughs> doctor, I'm not sure he's a doctor, Flexner, and he went around, quote, evaluating the medical training in our country. And surprise, the, the, the natural schools of medicine like homeopathy were not adequate, according to Dr. Flexner. And so this infamous Flexner report came out <coughs> describing the medical schools that were really scientific and should receive public aid and all that sort of stuff. And so the more natural schools went out of practice. They, they folded. So the homeopathic medical schools and <coughs> uh, stop practicing. <clears throat> well, they've gradually made somewhat of a comeback, but now the medical schools are now integrating with, first they did with the osteopaths, and so now you no longer get real osteopathic manipulation training. And now, guess what? They, they pride themselves on integrating with the chiropractors and the nature paths. And so I saw a lady the other day was had a, <clears throat> a pretty typical thyroid problem, and, and maybe a, and she'd been to a nature path. And the nature path didn't even talk to her about her diet. And that's, that's disappointing. But it's, it's the trend because the money is with prescription, and if you can get chiropractors and nature paths to start writing prescriptions, that'll, that'll really help the, the bottom line of the pharmaceutical people. <clears throat> so, unfortunately, you're, you're more and more isolated. You're on your own. You, you've got to take that responsibility. There's an alternative doctor in Corvallis recently. And she had a nice practice. She'd been there 15 or 20 years. But she finally left. She said it's, it's too lonesome. She didn't have people to talk to, to discuss these things with. And so she, and she was kind of considered the pariah of the medical community up there. So she didn't really fit in with the doctors at the hospital. And she did, didn't have other people in her immediate community to, to uh, reflect with. And so she finally gave it up. And so it's, you, you, you're kind of on your own. Not really. I mean, there are websites. And things. But <coughs> net neutrality, have you heard of that? Mm -hmm. They're, they're going to take away the Internet. No, not really. They're just going <laughs> to tell you what you can see on the Internet. Run <coughs> you're still going to have the freedom to look at anything you want. <coughs> That's unfortunately like what the medical board does. So you can go get alternative t treatments. <laughs> there aren't, just because there aren't any doctors that are administering them, <clears throat> That's not our fault. You're, you're free to get whatever you want. <clears throat> so, y y unfortunately, you've got to get political. I don't know, there, I recently email last couple of days. You've got to stand, you've got to contact your state senator because they're going to vote on a bill that forces you to get vaccinated. Sure, they're going to start with the kids. <clears throat> they're going to start with the kids say, oh, we've just got to protect our children. <clears throat> then who? Then, then, yeah, I, I, a lady called me the other day. <clears throat> I can't go see my new grandbaby. Why? Well, my uh, my daughter's husband or whatever says everybody that comes see this baby has to be vaccinated. Yeah, I heard of that happening. <clears throat> yeah, 
go. Wow. Uh, gran uh, the, uh, my friend um, couldn't go see her granddaughter unless she got a MMR. Yeah. Uh, she didn't want to, but she I know it. I know it. It's, it's a real dilemma, but <clears throat> that's kind of indirect pressure. But pretty soon, it's going to be mandated if we aren't yeah, if we'll we aren't have political. To have it to get into the to the uh, long term care facility. Well, no, you have to get it going to the mall now. If you want to go to Valley River Center, <clears throat> you've got to have your vaccination certificate. They're going to scan it as you go in the door. Or the little <clears throat> nano, whatever they put in there. Yeah. Well, we laugh and we think, oh, that that will never happen, <coughs> but it's oh, it's on it. happening, and that's why right now there's there's the Senate Bill 442. <coughs> They're trying to make it mandatory, no exceptions to vaccination for school age children. That's really ludicrous because if they really believe vaccinations work, why do you care if I'm not vaccinated? That's my okay. risk. That's but anyway, we're just going into uh, what do they call that fascism. I'm yeah, fascism. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're we're pretty much there. My oldest you know, grandson. My doctor was honest with me when I because I kept refusing the flu shot. And he says, you know what, that everything changes anyhow. So the, your flu shot probably wouldn't cover you no matter what. Well the package insert says it doesn't. Yeah. The flu shot package insert says there've been no studies to show this works. Yeah. yeah. They just want to put anyway, something in you they can track. Anyway, what, what I'm saying is <clears throat> you can either wait until, but, but right now you have an opportunity to, to be proactive, not really proactive, but prevent, maybe prevent this from happening until the next session. Then they'll bring it up again. So they got lots of money and time anyway. <clears throat> so anyway, I guess one of these days will be a vaccine for depression. You should see the list of <clears throat> vaccines in the in the, on the production line. They're thinking about vaccines for dental caries. They're thinking about vaccines for <clears throat> I don't know. It just goes on and on. Dr. Virginia Livingston in San Diego used to give vaccine vaccinations for to prevent cancer. And you know, she, she used to so treat cancer. And know how she made her vaccines? She took something from your bo own body. Yeah, your urine. Oh, is that what it was? Okay, I forgot. Yeah, she made a vaccine from your urine. They've do, been doing that in Germany. Mm -hmm. Dr. Stanislaus Brzezinski is making, getting, extracting antineoplastins from your urine and treating cancers. <clears throat> so it's not new, but anyway, What's that's that not the vaccine. What is that? Well, we won't talk about that now. It's a cancer therapy that Brzezinski developed <clears throat> by extracting certain proteins from your urine. But anyway, <clears throat> but, you know, it's... It's, it's moving in that direction. Mm -hmm. It's huge business. <clears throat> okay. But the B vitamins. You can look up the individual B vitamins and, and probably you sh in a lot of situations where you should use <clears throat> large doses of individual B vitamins, but in the background you need a good multiple B vitamins, sort of the foundation for that therapy. And sometimes just a good B complex vitamin <clears throat> will take care of your depression. What do you think in nutritional therapy? Say a little louder, nutritional please. yeast. What do you think of nutritional Brewer's yeast? yeast? I just read a book, and it was made in 1976. Uh -huh. And this lady was just talking about energy. She got so much energy because you take this. Well, yeah, there's, there's, an old, yeast there's an old remedy called Tiger's Milk, <clears throat> where they use a generous helping of brewers. It's just got a lot of B vitamins in it. And, uh -huh. you know, traditionally it was like cider vinegar. You can read whole books about it. <clears throat> And here again, what's the risk? What are the consequences if you took if you took brewer's yeast and took it regularly? Was there some risk? Yeah. No. Now, feed it to your animals. They love it. Dog or cat? I don't know about horses. Anybody have horses? Yeah, I do. Have you tried brewer's yeast with your horse? No. I don't think so. <laughs> it's kind of expensive for an animal that big. Well, you know, give them, you can just give them a teaspoon. Anyway. I, I've given it uh, as a regular diet in the rate and the competition. Of course, the competition, a lot of vitamin B. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. The vets and, and farmers know about vitamins for animals. <coughs> and their animals are usually healthier than the vet. Or, I mean, the... Farmer. 
<laughs> okay, but the B vitamins are, are but and, but you have to <clears throat> not rely. Don't rely on the recommended daily allowance. That's just enough to keep you from getting the deficiency disease. It's not, <clears throat> and each of us have a different nutritional need. But the, and so, but you need to educate yourself because if some of them can get you into trouble, vitamin B6 probably is <clears throat> the one you need to be most concerned about. Because if you take too much vitamin B6, you can get a thing called a peripheral neuropathy. And it, apparently, I've never seen it happen, but apparently <coughs> it can cause permanent nerve damage. So if you, it's usually when you're taking up to six, 700 milligrams a day. So 50 to 100 milligrams a day for most people is very, very safe. You can always douse it. So keep that in mind. <coughs> learn to douse, learn to muscle test. <coughs> and we've talked about all the other many benefits of uh, cardiovascular benefits with B6. <coughs> and so there's, there's literally dozens of paper relating to the use of vitamin B12 and uh, mental conditions. Now sometimes you have to, and here again, it's difficult because some people need injectable vitamin B12. And oftentimes you can't get it. And doctors here, they're so paranoid about <coughs> overdosing you on vitamins. They, I hear people say, well, I, my doctor gives me B12 shots. I'd say, well, how much? <coughs> he says, well, I go into the doctor once a month and he gives me a shot. <laughs> well, when I was in practice, we used to teach people how to give themselves vitamin B12 shots. They give themselves every day for two weeks. <coughs> we, you know, monitor how they're feeling. And if they're they are better, and then they cut it back every other day for a while. But if you could take vitamin B12 safely <coughs> for months on end. In fact, they did a study with kids with asthma, and they gave these kids <coughs> the whole vial, 50 cc's, that's 50,000 micrograms of vitamin B12, intravenously every day for a month. And at least half of them got well. Hmm. But uh, most doctors are be terrified to do that. <coughs> Very interesting, in this book, The Doctor's Dilemma, George Bernard Shaw, 100 years ago, <coughs> wrote, doctors are deathly afraid of doing something that other doctors are not doing, and not doing what every other doctor is doing. And that's so true today. You know, everybody wants to be part of the herd. But, uh, how, you know. how much was that, how much of a dose was that vitamin? Well, I mean, shots. Well, usually it's a thousand micrograms per dose. One cc. That's usually what it is. I think it's like methylcobalamin might be a little different dose. But you, it's fortunately, we've got the sublingual form now that's almost as good <coughs> as the shot. But you've got to take enough. Like the vitamin B12, if you're thinking that that might be a problem with you, Take it every day, or even twice a day for a while. But here again, you can douse it and find out what your dose should be, <coughs> and then respond accordingly. Then in a week or two, test yourself again. Because you might need it for weeks. You, if you're 50 years old, you could well have been deficient for 10, 20, 30 years. Vitamin B12 requires <coughs> a thing called intrinsic factor in your gut. And if your gut's not making hydrochloric acid, if you have bad eating habits, you aren't going to get what you need to get the B12 out of your food. We are not deficient in our diet. Animal protein, animal product, dairy products, cheese, milk, meat, have adequate quantities of B12 in it, but it's the trick is getting it out of, <coughs> getting out of the food and into our system. Also, it could be uh, a result of taking some drugs. Like well, sure. And if you read <coughs> Dr. Tanton's book, you see right. most of these medications deplete your, increase your need for vitamins and minerals. That's why they're dead-end medicines. You just get worse, and you need the medication more and more and more. I have a friend in San Diego who's about <coughs> 90 years old. He calls me once in a while to update me on how she's doing. And okay. the other day she called and said, I don't know what's the matter with me, but I think I have too much acid in my stomach, and I'm not taking Nexium. For that, and I said, I never heard of anybody 90 years old who has too much acid. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Almost always, those are not enough acid. Right. That's what <coughs> <I'm doing. coughs> and Dr. 
Uh, Tanton also wrote a book about diabetes, and in that he points out <coughs> that every traditional diabetic medicine increases your need for the vitamins and minerals that you need to prevent diabetes. So if you get on, and I just read in the paper or something, every 17 minutes or something like that, someone dies of a complication from diabetes in this country? Oh, it's, it's anyway, okay. <clears throat> so lots of minerals are, are, are very helpful too. Magnesium deficiency <clears throat> causes serotonin deficiency, which is the, the foundation. Serotonin is the foundation for many antidepressant drugs. They're trying to there's serotonin uptake inhibitors. In other words, once your body makes some serotonin, then it tries to keep you or your body from breaking it down. That's the foundation for many of these antidepressant medications. Well, if you're magnesium deficient, you're going to have less serotonin anyway. So maybe by taking your magnesium regularly, you, you, you'll have enough serotonin, plus a whole lot of other benefits. Okay, carbo crave another <clears throat> another. If you got a sweet tooth, think about chromium, which can also help. You you may have heard about L-tryptophan, which uh, the body, if there's enough niacin, see, your body needs niacin to convert L-tryptophan into serotonin, and that's probably another reason we're taking large doses of niacin. Now niacin is the flush vitamin and you have to get used to that. Do not take large doses of the the non-flush niacin. You can get a chemical hepatitis from taking large doses of that. For <clears throat> The flush is unpleasant but your body gradually adapts to that and pretty soon you'll flush less and less. So if, if that's what you need uh, learn to ad adapt to it and accommodate yourself. And on the other one, another amazing substance that we're learning more and more about is turmeric. Hope you all have a little container of turmeric on your table where you eat. And you're using it on a regular basis in small quantities. It's amazing how soon. I've had one there on my table for maybe three months and it's, it's half gone. So I prevented a pancreatic cancer, right? <laughs> I'm joking. <coughs> but it might. Who knows? Is, it ri is there a risk associated with it? <laughs> no. But turmeric's great, but you got to take enough. Now, most, <coughs> most people that use turmeric therapeutically recommend 500 milligrams. So I got out my milligram scale the other day to see how much of my turmeric uh, was needed for 500 milligrams takes about a quarter of a teaspoon. It's not the amount you'd use on your fried rice or <coughs> something like that. But And so if you decide you want to use it therapeutically, you can, you can go down and buy capsules, but you can also use what you have at home. But it takes, you can put it in, in, in gelatin capsules and swallow that way, but it's a kind of a nuisance when you can buy it almost, well, it's more expensive, but <coughs> much more convenient. You're more likely to keep taking it if you get it prepackaged. <coughs> Now, the Biochemic Handbook, we talk about this on a regular basis. <clears throat> in there, there are 20 different conditions under, under the term mental disorders, mental stress, that respond to the cell salts. And we've talked about that frequently. <clears throat> the cell salts, these, these funny little things that are very, very inexpensive, that are totally safe and often very effective. And it's even cheaper because even though the bottle says take four each dose, you really only need one. And so this bottle for 12 or 15 dollars has 500 doses. And then when it gets empty, you fill it with filtered water and shake it and you've got more. Then you can use the liquid in there. You never run out. So it's, but it's very, very effective. <coughs> and it talks about these different, let me just look here quickly. Mental, 
<coughs> oh, maybe I can't find it right away. <coughs> Mental symptoms, page 89. <coughs> That's how easy it is to use. Anxious, brain fag, depressed spirits, desire solitude, despondent moods, discouraged, feels discouraged, <coughs> fits of crying, hopelessness, homesick, irritability, melancholy, poor memory, moods anxious and gloomy, all these things. And what's nice about this little book, it goes, it's got all those different choices you can use. It's a, it's a great tool, but you have to think about it. You have to maybe have some of these around, because if you don't have them around, you can't get them at uh, many places. Even Fred Meyer now, I don't think they carry them anymore. <coughs> but we just happen to have them next door, <laughs> most of the time. <coughs> <coughs> OK, and another huge part is a little more, uh, women get the brunt of this attention. <coughs> But men go through menopause just like women do. And when testosterone levels go down, <coughs> men get depressed. And one of the reasons is when their testosterone level is low, <coughs> their testicles actually start making more estrogen than testosterone. That's normal for aging men to have less and less testosterone in his blood. But unfortunately, because of our environment and our diet and and thyroid deficiency, estrogen levels start going up. And so this ratio changes. <coughs> and when testosterone is low and thyroid's low and estrogen is relatively high, depression can be a major symptom. So you read about the books on testosterone, almost always it helps moods. Now women also benefit from testosterone, but in a much smaller dose. A man might need 20, 30, 40 milligrams of testosterone a day, a woman might need one or two milligrams of testosterone a day. And unfortunately, I think this is pretty much <coughs> you got to get a prescription for, but sometimes taking the, uh, the substance that is over-the-counter, uh, DHEA, which is a precursor to most sex hormones, <coughs> you can, if you, if, but if you wonder about testosterone, you can douse or you can go down to any lab test now and get a measurement of your free testosterone levels. <clears throat> and that will give you a, a, another clue as to what progesterone is another great antidepressant type over-the-counter hormone was very very safe men and women benefit from it <clears throat> it helps neutralize estrogen which is an aging hormone and so both and in men it's been shown that if you have a <clears throat> somewhat elevated PSA which is a prostate cancer marker you can lower your PSA with progesterone because it balances estrogen. Estrogen probably is the driving force behind an elevated PSA. <coughs> so <coughs> keep that in mind. Hormones are important. And if women haven't had six or eight pregnancies, it's, they're almost universally progesterone deficient, estrogen dominant. <coughs> have taken the birth control pill for more than a, a few months, that's going to be a problem too. So hormone balance is very, very critical. <clears throat> okay, uh, now <clears throat> one thing you need to keep in mind is, <clears throat> this is a, kind of a touchy subject, but you've got to use discretion who you share this information with. Sometimes if you, <clears throat> some doctors are very possessive of how you get treated. And if you treat yourself too vigorously, they get un uncomfortable and they may refuse to see you. And so you've got <coughs> to use guile. <laughs> you, I don't mean deception. And there's sometimes you, it's important that your doctor knows what you're doing, but most of these things are very, very safe. They're, if you're on anticoagulants or something like that, you, there are things that interfere with those. <coughs> but not if you're taking an adokinase or lumbrokinase or something like that. And so <clears throat> you've got to kind of feel your doctor out to see if he's going to be open to this. And sometimes you have to get the best information from your doctor that you can, and then you get the best information you can on your own, and then you make some judgment calls. And 
what you do may not, <clears throat> your doctor may not understand what you're doing or why you're doing it. But keep in mind, it's your body, your responsibility, and you've got to take responsibility for it. <clears throat> and <clears throat> so, uh, on the bottom of the page here, I, I put some <clears throat> uh, references, and you can add to that, uh, you know, you know earthclinic.com is another one. And <clears throat> you, should, uh, and you should be familiar with the Mercola's website, mainly because <clears throat> he's got a good archive. And you can go to his website and type in depression, and you'll be overwhelmed. <laughs> but see, the beauty of, of the dowsing is you can pull up a website and douse it and see if it's worth your time pursuing that particular avenue. Green Med Info is another one I didn't list here, <coughs> which is another really good website. That's one I just saw recently that pointed out the literature. See, <coughs> a lot of people don't like Green Med Info. I think it's mainly because it's so well documented. <coughs> the other day I posted a, a, a site, 200 different sources suggesting that vaccinations are harmful. 200. That's overwhelming. No one can argue it. No one can argue against that. <clears throat> and so, some traditional doctors don't like you bringing in internet stuff. Because it's not, well it is, it is. <clears throat> and so you've got to get yourself a little library. You, you should gradually be accumulating some literature, some, some good books. <clears throat> uh, like I said, Dr. Tanton books is a great one. And since so many people <clears throat> are afflicted by thyroid, you really should have, be, you should have read this book. You don't have to read the whole book, but you need to be familiar with the basic concepts behind it. Why is, why is my, <coughs> does my body need thyroid when my blood test is normal? Can you answer that question? Well, for one thing, the blood test usually detects <coughs> the pituitary and not your thyroid. You can just answer yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> you're right see and your, your, your body's cellular response may be different than what's in your pituitary but you see most doctors don't know that so you gotta be careful how you, you do. doctors are a little bit sensitive about what you know more than they do I'm always arguing with doctors <laughs> uh, okay what is the title of that book? <clears throat> hypothyroidism type 2 by Mark Starr. You get on, uh, don't you love Amazon? Two days later, the books are here. <clears throat> okay, and then if you haven't been to the class on homeopathy, you get familiar with the biochemic handbook. You know, it's cheap, and you, can, you don't have to start off with all 12 cell salts. You can start off with one or two. <clears throat> and so on our list of to-do things, if you <clears throat> score high on yourself, okay, you're, you're, you, you do this, and then you do, what, what would be the next thing you'd want to do? Can we get a consensus? I'm a failure. <laughs> what about baking soda and vinegar? That's another cheap thing. If you look on Earth Clinic, that's got a lot of positive response. You take the baking soda too. Now what's another easy thing? Most of us aren't going to be sick enough to, to really change your whole life. What's something else simple you can do? You can, you can take a good, pardon? The turmeric. Turmeric. That's another good one. And coconut oil. Pardon? Coconut oil. Yeah. And what about just a good B vitamin? And that's going to be more than you're going to get in your multiple vitamin. Vitamin D. Pardon? Vitamin who? D. Yeah, that's another good one. Now, you know, you could do these things. You, you probably could even eliminate <coughs> these two. If you did just these things, you'd probably get better. Could you tell us a little more about um, how to consume the baking soda and vinegar? <coughs> By How'd mouth. You, <laughs> <laughs> you just take about a quarter of a teaspoon. Here again, it's not... The amount is not critical. Okay. <clears throat> have to tell you a little episode. Remember, my family was getting the flu, and I suggested they do the baking soda with cider vinegar, <clears throat> and so I sent some over to their house. I sent about, you know, 
half a cup of baking soda and about a cup of cider vinegar. <clears throat> and the next day I said, well, how, how are you feeling? She said, well, I'm really feeling quite a bit better, but it sure was strong. I said, well, how much did you take? Well, I, I took what you sent over. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh, wow. <laughs> but, you know, it did nothing. She was up and talking. I mean, it wasn't. <clears throat> I would have loved to have a what video, funny as home videos, when she was, when she was trying to do it. But that, the, point, the point of the story is <clears throat> she didn't overdose. It, did, it didn't. And she wasn't prostrate. We didn't call 911. She didn't even call me. She didn't drink it at all. It did go down, apparently. It went down. So it generally, my feeling is what you tolerate. If, if it's so strong you aren't going to drink it, don't, it, take less. And especially if, you, if you're trying to do with children, you've got to maybe put some fruit juice in it and use real, real. And uh, I just now, some, some kids I recommend, just a drop or two of the vinegar. So I think it'll work homeopathically, too. And so you've Generally, though, it's they say two two t tablespoons of vinegar and, and a quarter of a teaspoon of baking soda in about four ounces of water. Now, Dr. Mercola says you know, if you're starting to get uh, the Arm and Hammer baking soda people <coughs> 50 years ago said to cure the flu, you take this dose, just the baking soda, six times a day, one day, four times a day, the next day, three times a day, the next day, and they were curing the flu with that. Wasn't that on? Yeah, I remember seeing that on their boxes as a kid. Oh, gee, you're older than I thought you were. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there were anyway, other things they said, you know. There used to be a booklet they'd publish. Yeah. But you won't see it anymore because we got vaccines. <clears throat> but that's generally the rule. Now, someone asked about magnesium. I think this is a good time to add magnesium. But it doesn't change the flavor a whole lot. And magnesium is another great <clears throat> immune stimulant. Like we read just here, it boosts your serotonin levels. It makes your cells, your brain cells, much less sensitive to excitotoxins. And those are things that are Adrenaline. killing brain cells. Excitotoxins? Yeah, MSG, <coughs> aspartame, those are things that overstimulate brain, nervous system cells. And when your, your, your brain cells, your nervous system cells are magnesium deficient, they're much more sensitive. They've actually, in Dr. Blaylock's book, Excitotoxin, they actually had <coughs> isolated nerve cells and they stimulated them with these chemicals. And there's a, there's a critical point, if you overstimulate beyond that point, the cell died. And so that means that's what's happening in, in many people's brains. And that's what's in vaccines too. And these kids have a weak, undeveloped blood-brain barrier and then we're giving them these excitotoxins in their <coughs> vaccines. Anyway, it's, it's perfectly mercury. safe. And the dose we give them is perfectly safe. They put mercury in it. <coughs> well, among it's other things, how, how much fetal DNA do you want in your vaccine? Anyway, we're not talking about vaccines. <coughs> but these are the things that, I mean, this, this list alone will probably, and then if you <coughs> exercise a little bit, And if you went to bed on time, see so your, your glands <coughs> run by the clock, by the circadian clock, the sunlight and the sunset. That's, and the acupuncturists say our, our meridians are stimulated at certain times of day. And when we don't go to bed on time and we turn on the lights, we make less melatonin. So if we just do a few, a few of these simple things, most people with depression would get better. I, I'm talking about you give up your, your diet pop and you, <coughs> you get off your sugar. What about um, too much screen time? Too much what? Screen time. Computer time. Computers. Well, sure, that's another stress. See, all these stresses just raise your, your, your body's need for these nutrients. Sure, too much screen time. There's radiation from that. <coughs> yeah. My daughter was a patient down in Mexico uh, at one of the cancer clinics, and one of the things they told them not to do was watch television during the time they were under treatment there. And everybody's different. See, if you're magnesium deficient, you're going to tolerate even less. All of us have strep in our throat, but none of us have strep throat. So what does that mean? It isn't the bug that causes the problem. It's the host. <laughs>